Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 5th of February. Indian Prime Minister Modi inaugurates Defence Expo 2020 in Lucknow City. Locals in Gilgit, Baltistan demand sealing border with China amid coronavirus outbreak. And U.S. President Trump seeks end to war in Afghanistan. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday announced the formation of a trust to oversee the construction process of Ram Temple on a decade-old disputed site in northern Ayodhya city. The announcement comes in the line with the verdict by the Supreme Court in November last year. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday announced the formation of a trust called Sri Ran Janambhumi Tirat Shetra, which will oversee the construction of a temple of Hindu Lord Ram on a decades old disputed plot in northern Ayodhya city. While addressing the lower house of the parliament, Prime Minister Modi said, as per the directions of the Supreme Court, the Union Cabinet had passed a resolution for establishing the Ram Temple Trust. He said the trust will be independent to take all decisions on and regarding the formation of the temple at the site. क्षेत्र का गठन करने का प्रस्ताव पारित किया गया है। ये trust आयोजना में भगवान श्री राम की जन्मस्थली पर भव्य और दिव्य श्री राम मंदिर के निर्माण और उससे संबंधित विषयों पर the announcement comes in line with the Supreme Court's verdict in November last year on the decade-old Babri Masjid Ram Temple case, which awarded the site to Hindus. The Apex Court directed the government to form a trust which will monitor the construction of Ram Temple on the entire 2.7-acre disputed land. The court also asked the centre to give 5-acre land to the other party in the case the Sunni Vakf board in Ayodhya for construction of a mosque. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday inaugurated the Defence Expo 2020 in northern Lucknow city. The five-day biennial military exhibition seeks to showcase the potential of the country to become a global defence manufacturing hub. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday inaugurated the Defence Expo 2020 in Lucknow city of India's northern Uttar Pradesh province. Delegates from 70 countries and 172 foreign military manufacturers will attend the five-day biennial military exhibition that seeks to showcase India's potential to become a global defence manufacturing hub. Prime Minister Modi at the inaugural address said, his government's goal is to increase India's defence exports to 5 billion US dollars in the next five years. Speaking about India turning into a manufacturing hub for military platforms that will enhance global defence exports, Modi said, defence manufacturing has found new energy in the country. Bharat's defence export was about 2,000 crore rupees. वहीं बीते दो साल में भारत करीब 17,000 करोड़ डिफेंस एक्सपोर्ट कर चुका है। अब हमारा लक्ष्य ये है कि आने वाले पांच वर्ष में डिफेंस डिफेंस एक्सपोर्ट उसको हम 5 बिलियन डॉलर यानी करीब करीब and that was a very proud the Defence moment. Expo promises to bring new technologies and solutions on a single platform for defence manufacturing firms from India and abroad. 
Three terrorists were killed on Wednesday in a gunfight with security forces in Srinagar in India's Jammu and Kashmir. The terrorists had reportedly attacked a check post in Parimpura area in Srinagar, killing world personnel of India's Central Reserve Police Force. In the gunfight that ensued, two terrorists were immediately gunned down. A third terrorist, who was captured in injured condition, later succumbed to his injuries in hospital. A cordon and search operation was still underway in the area till the last reports came in. Locals in Gilgit, Baltistan have demanded sealing of border with China amid coronavirus outbreak. They stage a protest expressing concern that people in the illegal occupied region stand vulnerable to the deadly virus and it will be a man-made disaster by Pakistan if the border is not closed down. The growing epidemic of coronavirus has rung alarm bells across the world, including Gilgit, Baltistan, a region under Pakistan's illegal occupation, which also shares border with China. People are coming out on the streets demanding an immediate shutdown of the border with China, the epicenter of the flu-like virus, which has claimed over 450 lives in China alone. In such a protest, people expressed concerns that around 2 million people in Gilgit, Baltistan stand vulnerable to the deadly coronavirus, but Islamabad is not ready to seal the border used for trade by some of its influential businessmen. और चाइना में एक इमरजेंसी सिचुएशन है और वहां पे एयरपोर्ट्स पे आप देख सकते हैं कि उन्होंने एयरपोर्ट्स को भी बंद किया हुआ है तो साथ में ऐसे सिचुएशन में पाकिस्तान के बॉर्डर जो कि गेटवे है खुंजरा बॉर्डर को चंद मुफाद परस्त जो हमारे बिजनेसमैन है उनके मुफाद के लिए इस बॉर्डर को खोलना हम समझते हैं कि यहां के आवाम के साथ एक डिजास्टर या मैन मेड डिजास्टर की तरफ आवाम को ले जा रहे हैं मैं यहां बताना चाहूंगा कि अभी तक पाकिस्तान के अंदर डेंगू वायरस और पोलियो तक हम काबू नहीं पा सके हैं तो अब ये कोरोना वायरस एक नई चीज क्योंकि पाकिस्तान के अंदर मुंतकिल हो जाएगा तो उस पर हम कैसे काबू पाएंगे Locals expressed concern that health system of the illegally occupied region is already in shambles and a new disease like coronavirus can trigger an uncontrollable epidemic. China uses Kunjari Pass in Gilgit, Baltistan, which is a part of its flagship China-Pakistan economic corridor for the supply of its businesses and the expansion of its trade in the world. Moving on. Nasir Aziz Khan, a prominent Kashmiri activist, has said that Pakistan observing Kashmiri Solidarity Day and claiming support for rights of Kashmiris is a political stunt and fraud in itself. He said if Pakistan really has sympathies for Kashmiris, then it should give autonomous rights to people in Pakistan-administered Kashmir, a region under its illegal occupation. Political activist from Pakistan-administered Kashmir, Nasir Aziz Khan, has said that Pakistan observing 5th February as Kashmir Solidarity Day is a political stunt and has no relevance. Khan urged Kashmiris to harbor no delusion about the sympathies of Pakistan as it is not ready to grant right to self-determination to the people in Pakistan-administered Kashmir, which is under its illegal rule. He blamed Pakistan has been recklessly exploiting natural resources in Pakistan and Mr. Kashmir and suppression and lack of economic opportunities has made it one of the most backward regions. Bhai, aap pehle unse poocho ki aapke jo zair intezam Kashmiri hain aapne unko koi rights diye hue hain unka right to self determination aapne koi mana hai aapne ke jo apne state ke log hain chahe wo Pashtuns hain chahe wo Baloch hain chahe wo Sindhi hain क्या आपने उनका जो राइट टू सेल्फ डिटरमिनेशन है जिसके लिए वो स्ट्रगल कर रहे हैं अपने राइट्स के लिए अपनी आजादियों के लिए वो स्ट्रगल कर रहे हैं क्या आप उनको ये राइट देने के लिए तैयार हैं पीपल इन पाकिस्तान एंड मिस्टर कश्मीर हैव लॉन्ग रेस कंसर्न्स ओवर पाकिस्तान्स इल ट्रीटमेंट एंड दैट दे आर नॉट अलाउड टू डिमांड इवन देयर बेसिक राइट्स दे ब्लेम द लिमिटेड ऑटोनॉमी ग्रांटेड टू द लोकल गवर्नमेंट इज अ कॉन्स्पिरेसी टू शो टू द वर्ल्ड दैट द इलीगली ऑक्यूपाइड रीजन इज अ सेल्फ गवर्निंग स्टेट यूएस प्रेसिडेंट डोनाल्ड ट्रंप हैज रिन्यूड हिज प्लेज टू ब्रिंग बैक यूएस ट्रूप्स फ्रॉम अफगानिस्तान एज हिज एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन एम्स टू एंड अमेरिकास लॉन्गेस्ट वॉर
U.S. President Donald Trump renewed his pledge to bring back U.S. troops from Afghanistan as his administration aims to end America's longest war. Trump, during his State of the Union address to U.S. Congress that touched on few foreign policy points, said, U.S. is working to finally end America's longest war in Afghanistan and bring troops back home. The peace talks between the U.S. and the Taliban armed group have failed to make headway in recent weeks with Washington insisting on reduction in violence as a condition to reach a deal. As we defend American lives, we are working to end America's wars in the Middle East, in Afghanistan. The determination and valor of our warfighters has allowed us to make tremendous progress, and peace talks are now underway. I am not looking to kill hundreds of thousands of people in Afghanistan many of them totally innocent. Earlier on Monday, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo demanded demonstrable evidence from the Taliban that it can and will reduce violence in Afghanistan before signing a deal that would lead to peace talks. Responding to Pompeo's remarks, Zabiullah Mujahid, a Taliban spokesman, said that the Taliban has the intention and capacity for the resolution. Pompeo's comments came just two days after U.S. peace envoy Zalme Khalilzad met Afghan officials, including President Ashraf Ghani in Kabul. Reports suggest that there has been no notable progress in talks with the Taliban. In from Nepal, lawmakers in Nepal have hit out at the government over its delay in evacuating its citizens from China and its failure to finalize the location to set up quarantine facilities. The death toll from coronavirus outbreak continues to climb in China and has risen to more than 450. Lawmakers in the House of Representatives lambasted the Nepali government for the delay in evacuating its citizens living in Hubei province of China, the epicenter of coronavirus that has reported more than 450 deaths. They also criticized the government for its inability to decide a place for quarantine China returnees. Nepal's Federal Socialist Party lawmaker Pradeep Yadav hit out at the government and sarcastically proposed that those to be rescued from China should be sheltered in the parliament. <laughs> Meanwhile, Nepal's Minister of Health and Population Bhanu Bhakta Dakal said the government is inching closer to finalize the place where the students to be evacuated would be kept. Last month, a Nepali student who had come home on holiday from Wuhan in China was tested positive for the coronavirus, making it the first confirmed case in South Asia. A fashion show held recently in India's southern Chennai city gave locals the chance to flaunt how cute their pets can look in different attires. Animals were seen dressed in fashionable clothes and accessories. Different pets and their handlers dressed in a variety of costumes in India's southern Chennai city took part in a unique fashion show recently. The event was a fundraiser for animal welfare organizations that work for stray animals. From a European crown and crypto, the super dogs cape to shimmering jewelry and furry frocks, the pets walked with grace at the ramp with their owners. Where we had all our own pets walking with designer clothes, and the Dalamme one it is done for a cause. The cause is we are supporting shelters and you know people who rescue animals. According to the organizers, the show was the first of its kind in Chennai city. The event raised a total of seven thousand US dollars from the donations. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. Indian Prime Minister Modi inaugurates Defence Expo 2020 in Lucknow City. Locals in Gilgit Baltistan demand stealing border with China amid coronavirus outbreak. And US President Trump seeks end to war in Afghanistan.
Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com slash sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.